the Breaking Defense All Domain Interview, made possible by our presenting sponsor, Parsons. So that really brings us to two things, cloud and standards. Now, from what I hear over the past few months, uh, it seems that people are coming to the conclusion that building standards reach back to older stovepipe systems, except in a few cases where they're crucial, maybe too just too hard and too expensive to do. Is that right? Or you know, so you're you're sort of generically looking more towards newer systems as you build this out, or is that unfair? <laughs> All nothing you ask is, is ever unfair. Um, so the uh, there's, so there's a variety of intended users. So when when you're talking about a um, a operational, strategic, or tactical command and control platform or place, uh, what we're what we're driving towards is the ability to instead of having bespoke single solutions for that platform. And in the Air Force case, you could think. Uh, a, a CRC reporting center, or you could think uh, a, a, an airborne platform like an AWACS or a JSTAR, as you can think of an ops center or a DGS. Uh, right now, there's specific weapon systems or IT systems that for each of those. What ABMS provides then is the warfighter only having to have a device that can connect to the network, and then the data moves naturally, just like you go into a website. So you're looking at sort of magic boxes that will take the data from the two sides and allow it allow them to communicate. Yes? Nothing magic about these boxes. So this, this, is, uh, this is commercially available computers uh, with the security layer on top of them to be able to reach out to each of the classification layers network. We, we do this all the time, but we don't typically then run our applications uh, mm -hmm. and software that people interact with it over that. When you have access to the to that commercially available, uh, you know, transport capabilities or government transport, it's great. But you, we can't presume that in warfare. And I think far too often we presume the perfect communications environment when we build systems. And so instead, uh, ABMS is taking the approach that's much more commercially, uh, uh, the much more commercial approach, which is assume degradation, and then it's a great day when you when you have access to it. That what that means is that in each of the edge, whether that's on a tanker, whether that's in the ops center, you have to have a local compute capability, which is why this all domain common environment, which is the, which is probably still military speak, I'm sorry, but, but it, it, what it does is it basically makes all the infrastructure bits and bytes transparent to the end, re, end user. And all you have to do is have a computer that can access the all domain environment on the network. And that's relatively straightforward when you have access to that transport options. Otherwise, you go you, you go it with the local edge system. So that's that's kind of the the, the secret sauce there. The difficult piece is uh, where you have a tactical edge node that, that doesn't speak the frequency or the language from one system to another, like the F twenty two and F thirty five example. Mm -hmm. And to the extent we're able to pull those into the network, that's being smart about translation. And and one of the ways to to do that is to do that take a platform that's side by side there for a primary purpose and give them a secondary function, which again is the right approach, but it's one that's not always done where it's too easy to go towards a special purpose translator in the sky or on the ground to go do that. Uh, and with software defined radios and networking, there's no reason for us to do that. And, and in fact, if we did it, we, that the, the bad way, we would find ourselves stuck say two, three, four years down in the future where something that works today on November 3rd doesn't work in the future uh, because software or because a standard has upgraded. And so that's back to that requirement from General Hyten that agility is the most important thing in, a, in the face of uncertainty, either from a tech development or from a, a war or threat type of perspective. Now, one of the things all of this uh, raises is security. You know, not, not just the jamming side, not just the hacking side, but uh, cyber security, electronic warfare security, resilience. Um, it sounds like by taking the commercial approach you are, that you're almost by default building some of that in, but that doesn't include, you know, NSA grade encryption and all that. How are you ensuring standards-wise 
that that's central to the effort as well. Yeah, great. So uh, it, it, unfortunately, you know, cybersecurity isn't only something that we have to worry about in the in the future with ABMS. It's really something writ large that uh, that's an important issue right now. So I wish it weren't, but it is. Uh, and so um, there's you know, kind of the traditional way to approach cybersecurity, which is that that perimeter defense. I got a castle. I build the moat around it, make it big, wide, patrol it. Nobody can get in. The, that is a, um, a little bit of a, a, it's a nice idea, but unfortunately, whether, whether actors or intentional- Always work. Yeah, that's right. It's, actors are trying to get in or just unintentional accidents from users that are on the network. The reality is that we, we must presume and wisely presume that, that stuff is inside too. So the moat defense is insufficient. Um, the nice thing is that there's a variety of, of you know, recently you know, evolved sets of capabilities to be able to address that, notably the importance of things like software-defined networking, where we can reconfigure the network via software very rapidly, something were to happen, that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, especially on the, the device and the network side, looking at zero trust and individual personalities on there and their you know, users uh, and their, their functions and what they typically do. Uh, it's also in terms of then the application, the software side, by us requiring the software to be be done in accordance with our uh, uh, agile DevOps reference design. What we get is a bunch of microservices. Think think each application that you're using having hundreds or thousands of small services inside of there, and subdividing not only the the success of the software into small pieces, but also the cybersecurity into small pieces. Mm -hmm. What we can do in that is that we can actually watch each element of the software package. And if it behaves out of accordance with what we expect, we can quickly shut down and restart up with confidence that nothing was inside of that particular system.